Good day. I'm Wesley Scott Johnson, Superintendent, Clinton City Schools, and I'm honored and blessed to serve in this position for such an incredible school system, full of wonderful educators and school level staff, including bus drivers, child nutrition staff, custodial, maintenance, our technology team, our school support staff, our admin, our front office, our nurses, building level and central level staff. We have a couple of goals that we want to, uh, to highlight from this video and a couple of goals that we'll be highlighting for the 2020-21 school year. Our priority items for this school year will be wrapped around safety. With safety, the health and wellness of our students and our staff, as well as sanitation and high quality teaching and learning every day. Also provided by clear, accurate, and consistent communication. This video is basically an introduction to some things that school will look like as we transition uh, from the pandemic uh, and into the 2020-21 school year. Of course, I know that these are uncertain times, so this video is hopeful to provide some reassurance to our parents, our staff, as we get ready for school re-entry. Let me first say that, you know, in, in the previous uh, situation that we had with the pandemic and the closing of schools as of March 13th, uh, we were really doing that in a reactive manner. Uh, and so this is more proactive. We've had several months to prepare. Uh, the superintendent, my team, our building level staff, and our teachers have been hard at work. Uh, we've been looking at the guiding documents, uh, the guiding documents through the CDC, through the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services. They've released several uh, guiding documents. Uh, they title those Strong Schools North Carolina. Uh, we're gonna provide access to those documents on our website. Uh, and through Dark Horse Return website as well. Also uh, through documents to, such as the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. Uh, their document that they released uh, to assist us with reopening is called Lighting Our Way Forward. And I would ask that you uh, please feel free to uh, Google these documents and look for them uh, for yourself. Wrapped around those documents, of course, was the governor's guidance. The governor's been, been providing uh, consistent communication and guidance uh, through weekly teleconferences uh, and through his executive orders, uh, which will go into play uh, in many of the documents that we've been reviewing and preparing for this new school year. I do want to talk about briefly the local work and the preparations that have been ongoing for the 2020-21 school year and school re-entry. Re there have been uh, loads of webinars, webinars that have been occurring pretty much on a weekly basis. Those webinars have included uh, conversations with uh, local and state leaders, including the governor, including uh, you know, uh, individuals from the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services, uh, local uh, teleconferences with uh, local government, our health department, EOC officials. Also, I've had lots and lots of communications with uh, other superintendents in the Southeastern region. Uh, we are part of the Southeastern Education Alliance and we are part of the, that alliance with other superintendents uh, and other leaders from, from, from across the state. We've had lots of communication as well there. Also regarding some preparation that we've done uh, to start and to prepare for the 2021 school year, we had summer leadership. At summer leadership, uh, I had worked and, to, to, and to develop with my team planning teams. Planning teams built around facilities and maintenance, child nutrition and transportation, student health and safety, Employ healthy, employ health and safety, and as well as curriculum and assistance. On those teams, not only did we have members of the central office staff, but we had members of our building level administration. We had parents, we had teachers, and we met for three days and we discussed the documents that were just uh, described to you from uh, Strong Schools North Carolina and Lighting Our Way Forward. I actually had them to prepare for a couple of weeks uh, to become experts in those fields so that when we got together and met during the summer leadership, we were uh, knowledgeable of the, those documents and could plan uh, CCS's re-entry plan. All of that has gone into to, to the work of getting ready for schools uh, to, to resume August 17th. Not only that, but there's also been a, lo a lot of local prep with uh, PPE ordering, uh, sanitation supplies, uh, custodial, bus maintenance trainings, 
uh, all of those types of things, as well as investigating personnel to make sure that we have the individuals that we need as we get school reentry uh, for the 2020-21 school year. Things like custodial needs. Do we have enough custodians in our building? Uh, nurses, uh, teachers, instructional staff. So all of these have gone into the planning and to the preparation for our students to resume and to restart schools. Let me just say that I know that, that, that there may be some questions. There may be some things that our parents still uh, want to know, uh, but I can assure you that we are prepared for schools to resume on August the 17th. There may, be, there may be some logistical questions that you may still have. If you have logistical questions, please feel free to reach out to your building level admin. If you're building at level admin, uh, they can provide you with the logistical uh, um, plans that they have for their own building level uh, teams. Uh, also, please feel free to reach out to my staff. Uh, the staff at the central office can provide clarifications to specific questions that you may have, or please feel free to reach out to me. We're here to help you and to alleviate any concerns that you may have about sending your students back to school. Uh, again, I do thank you for your patience and your understanding. Uh, please let me acknowledge at this time that we uh, will have two opportunities for your kids to return for the 2020-21 school year. We will be having a hybrid, uh, a hybrid plan. Uh, for us, we call it Plan B. That's what the governor asked us to resume schools with in Plan B. But he also asked us to provide virtual experiences for our parents and families that felt that that was a better and safer uh, investment for their students in the 2021 school year. So we have both. In our Plan B, we will have K-2 students returning for five days a week. Uh, class sizes will be uh, small, a lot smaller. Uh, probably around 10 to 12 at the K-2 environment. And then from our 312, we'll be on an AA, BB cohort. And so with Wednesday being a day uh, for hybrid or for um, you know, our, our, our teachers to plan together and also to do some synchronous instruction with our students. If you're on the 312 uh, AABB, you will be divided into a cohort uh, from building level admin. And they will let you know if you will attend, if you're A, you will attend Monday, Tuesday, then you will have a, a B day, and then uh, the B day for everyone will be on Thursday, Friday. We do have a calendar that has been posted to our website for the AB schedule as well. Again, we look forward to working with you all as we start the 2020-21 school year. We are excited about this new adventure. We're excited about the new school year. And whatever way that you decide to return to us, be it in the face-to-face -face model, the blended model, or the virtual model, let me assure you that we're prepared and we're ready for students to return on Monday, August 17th. At this time, I'm gonna ask uh, for Stacy Carr, one of our guidance counselors at Sunset Avenue, to provide you a little guidance and assistance to show you what schools will look like as we return. Thank you. Hello, Dark Horse Nation. For those of you who choose to have your child receive face-to-face -face instruction within one of our school buildings, Let's discuss what Clinton City Schools is doing to stay within the CDC and Health and Human Services guidelines to ensure that all students are safe. If your child will utilize bus transportation, know that the general capacity will be significantly lower on buses in order to allow for social distancing. And please be aware that an attestation form must be completed before your child is permitted to ride which attests that your child does not have any concerning symptoms. This form will be completed on a regular basis. Each day upon arrival, whether by bus or car, masks must be on and worn at all times. Student temperatures will be checked and they will be asked a series of health screening questions before being permitted to enter the building. In the event that a student has a temperature of 100.4 or higher, or display any concerning symptoms, they will be placed in an isolation room. Parents will be called and next steps will be determined. As they make their way down the hall, students will have social distancing and teachers will be strategically placed throughout the building to enforce all guidelines. Hand sanitizer stations will be provided in all buses, classrooms, entryways, and common areas. In classrooms, Student desks and tables will be marked or spread apart to keep at least six feet between students at all times. And there will be no sharing of learning supplies. Protocols for lunchtime will look different depending on what's best for each school. 
But whether students are eating at their desk, in the classroom, or in the cafeteria, social distancing will be observed and all eating spaces will be cleaned and sanitized after each use. Use of lockers will also be discontinued and students will keep backpacks with them. Bathroom breaks will also look different as there will be a limited number of students allowed at one time, depending on the number of stalls. Teacher monitoring and floor markers will ensure that students remain six feet apart while waiting. Additionally, there will be schedules for ongoing cleaning and disinfection of high touch areas such as door handles, stair rails, faucet handles, toilet handles, playground equipment, light switches, desk tables, and the like. Even though there will be restrictions and guidelines in place, we still want our students to enjoy their school environment as much as possible. Therefore, PE, recess, and student free time will still be observed, taking place outside as much as possible with social distancing. Sports and extracurricular activities will be allowed in strict accordance with the CDC, Health and Human Services, and Athletic Association guidelines. As with anything in life, there are no guarantees, and all we can do is plan, prepare, and put our best efforts forward to achieve our desired goals. And we've actually had the opportunity to see our plans at work this summer during our Jumpstart program. Hello, um, this is my second week doing summer school here at Sunset Avenue, and we've gotten a taste of what it would be like in the classroom. We have um, small numbers, uh, we are wearing our masks, we're following the proper procedures, Clinton City Schools, we have everything in place, and everything seems to be working smoothly, and we're here to do our best to make sure that everyone is safe and has a positive learning environment. To receive more in-depth information on what the upcoming school year will look like, please visit our school website and click on Dark Horse Return. We know that these are unsettling times, not just for you, but for all of us. And so it's going to take all of us coming together to get through them. Clinton City Schools appreciates your patience and please know that we are putting proper procedures in place, willing to do whatever it takes to ensure the safety and success of all of our students, whether online or in person. Please feel free to reach out to your child's school with any questions that you may have and someone will respond to you in a timely manner. We are looking forward to connecting with our students once again and we thank you for the opportunity to serve them. So continue to be safe. Know that we will get through this, for we are and always will be Dark Horse Strong.